Hello and welcome back to me playing RP1. So with me tonight is Maxwell as we try again because <laughs> my internet crapped out the last time I tried. Uh, so let's see, moderate and KSP wheel is here. Uh, Max speed scale power was 0.7. Come on. Close enough. Clearly, I'm not going to be able to nail it. Uh, oh, yeah. Storm that probability. Number was pretty uh, inexact, so. Yeah. Your mileage may vary. So something like that for that, and then here we are, speculative level. Give me all the parts. I wonder if the default should be somewhere in the middle there. Yeah, I mean the it used to be at alt hist uh, and for like your average player playing it probably it should be there yeah I, I think you're right um, this all is fine uh, now that we're making a safe breaking update we can nuke that Uh, need to release a version of this where these are correct. They always default the wrong way. Alright. Let's do this. Uh, so, so I was starting to say before my internet died, uh, this is called LCDev because this is from the Launch Complex branch of RP1 where I've been rewriting how RP1 Space Center management works. Uh, you now have personnel instead of upgrade points um, and that's a lot of windows also I'm not sure early bird works because it always puts me before sunrise that's fine oh I should have made a note of their names first uh, so you don't use, use warp to dawn uh, that is that is early bird. So warp to dawn. Uh, oh, is that a different mod, or are you talking about this? No, the stock. Yeah. Yeah. So that is unless you made a bunch of fixes in stock, that doesn't play nice with the fact that uh, RSS is on inclined orbits. Yeah, may not. Yeah. So early bird was written to deal with that, but it's still, I think, undervalues. Although I did, I do think we did some fixes in the later versions, so I wouldn't be surprised if it works now. Cool. Either. Uh, I just can't, you know, like it's been yeah. a year and plus. Yeah. Uh, okay, so as you can see here, things are different. Uh, we've got operations at various launch complexes. And each launch complex has a pad, except the hangar, which has special handling. Uh, launch complexes have a minimum as well as a maximum mass and they have a size limit. You can modify them if you want to change those limits uh, and you can build new ones or dismantle. Um, that shouldn't be allowed. But maybe you could dismantle that and keep only the hangar. I forget what I did for that code. Uh, and they have some number of pads under them. So let's uh, take our 20 free personnel and assign them. So I know I'm going to want a 
somebody in the hangar to build planes. That didn't update. That should have updated. That's an interesting bug. Uh oh. <laughs> there. That worked. Oh, yes, of course it didn't update because I didn't actually assign them. I only hired them into my engineering pool. Yeah, not a bug. Just dumb. Uh, and I don't need any construction staff yet because I'm not building anything. Um, and I don't think I want to... Given these operating costs, I'm not sure I actually want to assign everyone yet. Um, so I'm going to dismiss that dialog, and I can always do that later. All right, let's take the starting contract. this completed and it's so clunky I need to just write code to do that um, alright so let us build ourselves a whack corporal of some sort By the way, when you did that, I don't. I actually don't know if you implemented, it, but if you made the uh, idle engineers not cost as much as uh, I haven't written that. No, that was like you literally suggested that an hour ago. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like you're on valve time. So, <laughs> That's true. You know. <laughs> That's true. Uh, no, I but that. Would... No, that. I was going to say you should make sure they're not gaining, but uh, gaining productivity. Uh, yes. Well, uh, so productivity doesn't actually. So I know what what you're going towards, and I actually did make that fix already anyway. Okay, fair enough. Um, but so yeah, yeah, but like that was already basically true. Is that uh, the launch complex will only gain in efficiency when uh, it's building something? And let me just verify that. Uh, I also did this fix correctly. Skill up. Where's skill up? Um, yes, uh, it will only skill up your global engineering thing if uh, somewhere there's a construction being built or uh, an actively built. So there have to be active construction workers at that KSC. Um, or if at least one launch complex is um, is actively doing something, uh, and once I do the thing where there's uh, idle, there's support for idle engineers, then I'll I'll do the weighted, I'll do the actual weighted thing where it's just the portion. Good. Yeah, only the the active portion get that. That makes sense. Sounds good. I actually didn't think you would have implemented that because I mean. Before that, there was no exploit in leaving engineers, no potential exploit in leaving yeah. engineers idle. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, but just like from a from a sensible standpoint, like you don't they don't skill up when they're not doing anything. Like I mean, I guess they could be reading engineering textbooks, but <laughs> Uh, I have, at the moment, the engineering cap existing is the extent to which it's been balanced. Uh, it has, it has not been balanced further than that. And I think we'll just see how it plays out. Um, also, I really don't want to bother to build a WAC corporal, so I'm going to load my old one, uh, which I have. somewhere around here. Uh, ships, maybe. Uh, they called it like Bumblebee or something. Yeah. Bumblebee, there we are. Uh, it won't load because it's using the wrong part, but I'm gonna hack the save file to make it load because I'm a lead hacker. What part is it using? You didn't play this that long ago. The Terabi decoupler. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I, I um, thanks to PAP's help, implemented it into um, our tanks decouplers. It makes sense. Uh, what's a good temporary part? We'll just use the cubic octo strut, because sure, why not? Strut cube. Let's see if we can do this. Wonder how horribly broken this will be. Look at that. Not horribly broken at all. I'm a lead hacker. Nice. Uh, okay, and we want the hollow interstage. And it's actually one of the trusses, weirdly enough. There we go. Looking good. And because Pap is awesome, he actually made it properly hollow. So I think I can go ahead and do this. but I'm not going to risk it because <laughs> I just want to see how this thing plays. Um, Aerojet General. Uh, staging is all kinds of screwed. is the other what other decoupler do I even have there's a ring decoupler in here where is there a ring decoupler well, I mean you can mouse over and should highlight it the craft for you yeah I know but I wasn't seeing where the highlight was oh it's down there that's interesting Oh, right. No, I know why that is. Because this doesn't actually properly decouple if memory serves. Okay. 
so. Ninety five days is an awful lot of time. Oh, because I haven't tooled it yet. You have max entries on that LC, right? Yeah, I'm in max of five, because. Yeah. 66 days, that sounds more like it. Alright. We'll tool it. And. You have your radio maxed out. <laughs> it costs ninety nine. That's about what I remember wax costing. Okay. Uh, I wonder if the launch clamp costs a lot or something. Do you have your uh, radio at thir thirty decibels? Uh, maybe. Yes. I mean, it doesn't make that much difference. That's true. I mean, it does save like 10 days. Yeah, because Avionics gets the 2x multiplier for build yep. points as well. All right. Okay, was added to the LC's build list. Now I'm also going to bring over the, I think I called it the Hornet. Can you not access your other saves from our load menu now? Uh, I totally can, but I don't actually have that save. That saves oh, in 110. Okay. Contains locked or invalid parts. What does it have? You also would need to check all games. I mean, I can... But that's only for the search. Never mind. Yeah. What the heck did was did I really wait until I had supersonic wings to build a V2? I guess. Apparently apparently the answer to that is yes. That's interesting. Yeah. Wonder if I oh I wonder if I saved over it or something. Um, yeah, let's see. I had where are my insects? Bumblebee. Oh, you know what? Let me just probably can get away with doing this, but we'll find out. Uh, no. Wonder if it... You'll know... You may or may not know the answer to this. Um, uh, which is, if I go back into the editor, will it refresh the list of saves? Um, yes, it should. Okay. 
Yeah, because it didn't refresh it, refresh it on the fly. Yes, it did. Okay, cool. All right. Whole lot of stuff in here. Thank you all for writing this feature. I like this feature. Yeah, no worries. Uh, and also, it actually uses the upgrade pipeline, unlike Craft Manager. Yeah, I mean, I mostly added that feature because I saw how convenient Craft Manager was. <laughs> yeah. But also, we were doing some other stuff with uh, to give you. I mean, we had. Uh, more of our user base was like end game users now, so they had a lot yeah. of craft files, so it made sense to add that feature toward the end. Yep. Okay. Yeah, all right, I think I can't, I mean, I could build this with early wings, but I think I'll get enough science that I should be fine. Art of stuttering, yeah, I bet you're right. I bet I did, oh, no, I hacked the craft file of my plane and did that. I don't think I hacked it for the Hornet, but maybe I did. Uh, and Score Patrol, basically what I did for this was I think I... It's in one of the YouTube episodes of RP1 Hard Campaign near the start where I, I had to do a lot of hijinks to make it work. I think it involved like making this the root part, surface attaching something else to it, then making the other thing the root part again, then offsetting it and using a special decoupler to also decouple it right. Um, but Okay. Um, I'm going to build a second one. And I'm going to look up on Wikipedia, the list of historic launch complexes. Where's the list that I used to use? Um, there we are. Oh, oh, Wikipedia has it as launch sites, not launch complexes. Okay. Um, historic. Uh, so there weren't any that launched arrow bees, I think. Yeah, there were not. Uh, because they were launched at Wallops or White Sands. Um, they did launch the bumper whack from Canaveral, Eastern Range, but um, not anything else. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and rename this LC1, and we're going to rename this LC1, and there's basically no real case where I'm going to care about having a second pad here because the rollout and reconditioning times are so low. So I'm not going to bother to do 1A or whatever. Um, all right. The other thing that I'm going to want to start doing is building a plane. Or do I want to wait for the X1 cockpit? I guess I should just, I should not wait. Um, I mean, it depends how optimal you want to be, but you, yeah, you definitely shouldn't wait if you want to be reasonably optimal. Yeah. Uh, 
And for once in my life, rather than building it myself, I think I'm going to go grab the Super Junkers. Or somebody's nice starting plane. Since half the craft files posted to uh, the craft channel seem to be some variation of early plane. It shouldn't be hard yeah, to but they all something. they all have the the X1 cockpit. Oh, there's one. That, okay. Okay, that looks way too optimized. I'm not going to use that one. It looks amazing, but it's way too optimized. All right, going to use Zephyr's. Yeah, I'm trying to actually test the gameplay here rather than just build things. So let me go ahead and copy this across. Oh, that's my dev folder. There we are. Ah. Uh, Okay, that is a thing that looks reasonably reasonable. Definitely has enough tail. I'm really impressed <laughs> at the amount of tail it has. Uh, does not feel like it has enough wing area, but uh, also the fact that the landing gear are just hanging out in the middle of nowhere, that feels kind of weird. I usually lower the, the wings. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's a problem. Yeah, that's about what I'm going to do, especially because pretty sure it's going to blank the the H stabs if they're not lowered. Um, I mean, really, you kind of want to do it the other way around because at high alpha, you'll still blank. Yes, that's correct. When all you have is an early jet, all you, everything ends up basically looking like a Hun. Yeah. All right, so that's... We also don't have the landing gear in the game that we would really would like to have. Or that is very true. That's... Okay, that looks more viable. I've probably screwed up the area ruling slightly. And I think I want to lower the scale of this a little bit. There. Yeah, that was built to take off by itself, I guess. Yeah, my hunch is that I'm it's the it's gonna have a little bit of a risk of a tail strike, but also that something looks really screwy here, like there's a hole here. <laughs> You get what you pay for in this case. Yeah, I'm thinking that I just did something wrong. And loading it or something. Alright. 
slight modification and so controls decrease increase no other commands of note okay um oh yes i need to switch launch complexes to the hangar one also clearly won't go do supersonic but i guess you're not counting on it for that uh so it should hit 350 in a dive Which but is a significant that maybe. Yes. Point one and this area. Oh, except I can't scale it because I don't we need to write a stupid simple we need to like have our lib scaling support for intakes. For I think I have said that many times, yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. It doesn't bother me for the radial ones as nearly as much as it bothers me for the um, inline ones. Yeah. Because none of our engines are like 1.25 meter engines, but then all of our uh, inline ones are 0.625 or 1.25. Yep. The old Kerbal ratios. All right, one meter. Point two five. Is that a? That's structure. All right, so we have a bunch of structure, and a nose cone, which is also structure, and then a tank. One point two five tank. That's going to be expensive to tool. I guess you get, they're counting on you to build a 1.25 meter V2 eventually. Yeah, which I think the Hornet is, if it would let me load the darn thing. Oh, not so bad then. But yeah, still need to fix the fact that structure is more expensive than, uh, than uh, tooled tanks. Yes. Also kind of weird that they used a 1.25 meter structure and a 1.25 meter tank. Yeah. I think on the presumption that we didn't have the problem where it's actually cheaper. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Wonder why the time. All right, that's a bug. The the Kerbal construction time GUI was not showing the right numbers for build time in the in the hangar. All right, so I think I want to. make that build somewhat faster. And we'll see what completes first. The bumblebee by a little bit. Should fly the plane first though. How come? Well because you can fly the plane to get first launch and then the bumblebee to get Carmen, presumably. Uh, no, this is not going to reach Carmen. It's probably going to reach about 75 kilometers. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is an actual whack, not a 
not a cheese whack. Gotcha. Okay, so our engineers are not costing us that much because we have a considerable subsidy. We really need to localize that. Given that it is already localized in KC Switcher, we're just not localizing it in RP1. Um, All right, let us examine our stats. Ah, it is a very low stupidity team. I like. Okay. Uh, so, here we go. And we're going to roll this out. It's going to take eight hours. And I wonder if this even has any scientific instruments on it. Yes. However, <laughs> it does me no good because they are shielded. I think your thermometer still works if it's shielded, just not the barometer. I think it's the other way around. Okay, maybe, yes. But I'm not actually sure, even though I'm pretty sure I was the one who wrote that. <laughs> or made that call. Oh, I know how to fix this. Yeah, we just put we just put configurable experiments on these things. And then we don't have to deal with this weirdness. Anyway, uh, what time is it? All right, we can wait till morning. And we can wait a little after morning so we can actually see what we're doing. All right, let's see if we get a failure. go. See if I can manage to stage correctly. Looking good. We first launched. And we got an altitude, oh we got a speed record, we'll get an altitude record. Man it's been a while since I played. <laughs> Uh, cause I like had to remember how to use these things. Oh. <laughs> oh, 
I guess maybe we will hit the Carmen line. That was nice. Did not expect that. I wonder if we had a slight overperformance on the engine. I'll be very sad if I if the reason we went over the Carmen line was because I had good performance this time and I won't the next time. So many records. Watch your fingers. Hey, take him. Okay, we don't actually have to deal with the Principia window for a while yet. And I'm going to want Classic Ascent Profile. At least for a little while. Apogee. And we are actually getting science, which is nice. Uh, squirrel, if you um, I don't actually know. I would expect that if you turn on the RSS RO mode in settings or whatever, or like don't res um, keep existing throttle and you throttle up before you engage it, then maybe it will. I mean, I'm going to find that out pretty soon because I'm going to do the same thing. That's why I brought it up. It's classic ascent for for my downrange milestone. Some fairly hot wings. Well, apologies to whatever <laughs> bit of Merritt Island is underneath us. Oh no, I guess we're we are actually over the cape proper. And not Merritt Island. Okay. Highly successful.
All right, as we carefully clear away all the aniline and nitric acid from the pad. And then this completes in a couple days. Now we have a bunch of options. So, sure, we'll take Carmen line and we'll take Break the Sound Barrier. And that has sounding payload. thirty seconds at Mach 1. That's going to be pretty tough. We might need rocket assist. So before I actually do that, Um, what does 112 bring? Um, like a bunch of user experience tweaks and improvements and um, it also inventory for the yeah, jetpack I, yes parachute. yeah we it we support it's not so much that 112 brings it as the fact that we now support 1.11 plus which means we support the Kerbal inventory system and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to simulate this. Because I want to see how it actually behaves. So I know what I'm getting into. Okay, so Oh, that's right. I'm not air launching. <laughs> I have to take off from the runway like a schlub. <laughs> Oh, you know what else this doesn't have? This doesn't have spoilers, I think. Probably not. So Got too used to being spoiled by air brakes too. Yeah, we don't want to know how the flight's gonna end, so no spoilers. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, I never use spoilers anyway, but that's because I design planes with like sensible wing loadings and stuff, so I don't need them. I mean... Like, I have pretty low wing loading, but I still use spoilers because I don't like going around a bunch and bleeding speed. I mean, maybe it helps that uh, Conrad ILS makes it really quite easy to shoot and approach. Yeah, well, that would do it. I mean, that helps, but even so, like, 
you still like if you're doing a if you're doing a suborbital with a rocket plane, you're going to have to bleed off a bunch of speed unless you're starting way down range. But he's just letting the computer do it for him so he can go you know, have a coffee while he waits for ILS. No, no, Conrad doesn't do no, any. <laughs> yeah, con, con, see, con, con, Conrad ILS isn't really an ILS. It's just it's a um, like glide slope calculator. Basically, it looks at what's your what's your current glide slope. How far away are you from the runway? And what's your altitude? And then it tells you how far away you'll be from the runway when you hit the ground okay. if you stay on this, this glide slope. Well, I thought it would be. I mean, that's what an ILS would do. But I thought the fact that it was Conrad was meant you automated it also. No, Con Conrad is 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 always readouts only. Okay. Okay. Thank you, AA, for doing the right thing. Now. Yeah, I don't think we want more than 5Gs or we'll have a bad time. And let's go to 9-0 and vertical speed, 5, go. Woo, Nelly. Let's get a nice climb. can actually increase our climb rate even more. Which control surface? Okay, minimal control surface deflection. So, yeah, we're still... Yeah, we can sustain this climb for a while. So, yeah. Let's get up to... This is unpressurized, so I'm trying to remember what the limit on that is. 16. 16, yeah. Oh yeah, also I left my flaps down. I really, it's been a long time since I've flown planes. Yay, zoom climb. Now we have to build up speed again to climb more.
need to lower it in your nose to so you touch more. Yep, that's... Let's reduce alpha enough to be meaningful. And now I can go back to 5 meters per second climb right and still gain some more. I wish you could set it to speed hold climb, but I don't think there is yeah, such an option. Nice. Yeah, that would be really nice. I mean, the way I usually do a speed hold climb is just manually set trim. Yeah. Though that does then mean that you get a, a few guides that you got to deal with. Now we've got enough speed we can actually climb more appreciably. All right, I guess we've got to dive some, get our speed back. But I guess that's kind of the surface ceiling? Maybe not, I don't know, hard to say. Should be able to hit 200, 220 in this thing and then punch up a little higher. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we've got to dive down first. There we go, now we're piling on the speed. Yeah, Squirrel, I think you spoke a little too soon. Because uh, the performance seems about identical to yours. Although, remember, I did modify this slightly, so I probably screwed up the area rolling. Could also try dumping some fuel.
wonder if this would do slightly better if um, the wing were at a slight angle of attack. Slightly, but at the alphas you're, you're at right now, the yeah, it wouldn't. extra alpha of the fuselage doesn't make that much more drag. Here we are. All right, alpha gradually lowering, which increases the speed, which lowers the alpha. It's just going to take a little while. So, I think it's time. Let's see if we can get above Mach 1 for a reasonable amount of time. Whoa. All right, supersonic oh. at 38. So we need to stay supersonic until 08. Want to pitch up a little bit. Yep. Yes, we can do 30 seconds. We're still at 8 kilometers, even. Yeah, hopefully you've got enough wing strength, you're going to be uh, pretty fast and uh, thick there. Mm. It's fine, I'm, I'm under 2 Gs. Right, right, right. Sorry, I mean... Uh, I play with wing strength low enough that if you're doing 400 meters per oh, second under yes. under five kilometers, the wings rip off regardless. I see. Yes, not every not everyone is min maxing wing strength to that degree. All right, so only now are we subsonic. Okay, cool. So yes, I'm reasonably sure that this thing can make 30 seconds. I think that wasn't entirely unreasonable. There were plenty of planes that were supersonic but did not want to go to supersonic at, at low altitudes. I mean, yes, that's reasons. true. That's very true. Yeah, it's default wing strength. Okay, so let's start. Some science. Okay, now let's go ahead and assign So I'm going to 
unassign you for now. And Okay. Hmm. I guess I'll leave you assigned. It's fine. Doesn't really matter. But I think I want to hire some more researchers. Because right now, yeah, even with that, wait, why is the research team's thing saying zero? Oh, because it hasn't updated yet. All right, I need to post an event when you hire so it auto updates. All right, so now we're paying about 10K a year. If I built another launch complex and it was like that. All right, it would be very cheap to build and then I could spam a few wax while That seems fine. However, let me get the height of this thing before I make that decision. Oh, that's right. Yes, of course they. Of course that's true. Supersonic again? Sorry? Supersonic wings again? No, the Terabi decoupler. Other one is the R. Back in a minute. Yep. Um. Okay. I have now done the hackery perkery.
Oh yes, this was the stupidly overburned version, it looks like. Maybe? Oh no, this was the recoverable one, that's what's going on. Yes, that's what's going on here. See, do I have to tool anything here? Apparently, yes, but they're cheap. Oh, ha, right. I have to replace this. Um, all right, so that, 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 and then that, and then... Yes, okay. Uh, this thing has science in it. That's why I'm loading it up. Like, if we look inside, there it helpfully is. Isn't that the problem you had on the last one? Yeah, but this thing, that's a that's a decoupler. All right, okay. Yeah, this is the this is the version that's recoverable and it has science instruments. Gotcha. Although interestingly, it looks like both actually work well shielded. So who knows? I think I, it must be other experiments that don't work well shielded. Oh, it needs a better. Yeah, because this is, yes, this is set for the next engine. So we're not using that rocket yet. It did look a little long. Yes, that explains why it was so long. Oh, shoot, I was just, I was dumb. I literally, the, I forgot the exact reason I went in there, which is... What is this thing's dimensions? Dimensions are 11.3 meters. That's taller than I would have given it credit for, but I guess it is stretched. So, Squirrel, yeah, the way that worked was... Um, I made the launch rod the root, surface attached the rocket to that. Sorry, uh, 
made the launch thing the root, Surface attached the decoupler to that, built the rest of it off of that, and then rerouted. I think that was the process. Uh, so, yeah, let's look at the cost of making this be, let's see, 2, and, oh, I need to have a field for giving the pad a name, I guess. Um, two tons. Okay, that's considerably more expensive. But is probably still worth it? Like, will I... Will I want to launch enough Arabies and then modify this thing later? Like, probably. Guess you'll find out. Yeah, we'll see if this is the right call. Surprised the Max Engineers goes up to 25 for this. That seems extremely wrong. Yeah. I would have expected 10. Maybe. Oh, because uh, I guess it's the dimensions is what's making them that instead of the tonnage. Oh. Nope. That seems... That's wrong. Yeah, I have a bug. <laughs> that seems very wrong. Okay. No big deal. Play yep. testing. Yep. All right. Let's let's build it and then let's. Go ahead and unassign. Well, we'll wait a couple days and then unassign both of them. Okay. 154 days. That's a lot. That's way longer than I would have expected. How many construction workers do you have? 10. Yeah, that's fair. But it's so I let's see. 10 workers. Pricing. And the total cost was something like 9k. Mm -hmm. All right, something screwy because my estimate is that it should be 50 days. Oh, it's fit. No, it's of course it's 50 days at normal efficiency. So they're not at normal efficiency. They're at half efficiency. So that's why it's taking so long. But 154 days isn't right. It should be just be double that. Construction rate is 0 0.08. It goes to 0 0.04. Oh, I sure should if you wanna... interleave these anyway. Maybe. Never mind. Hmm? Yeah, I probably should. Nothing. I was thinking whether global efficiency should apply to construction work or not. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it should. It should. Oh, that's why, because uh, because apparently I didn't update a formula. That's what happened. Construction. No, that's correct. Point oh five. To the point sixty five power. Ooh, 
okay, something is really screwy though. Construction rate uh, is 0 0.005 times the number of workers and then to the 0 0.625. And that is not what this is reporting. There are 10 workers. So how is it 0 0.08? Is there a hidden factor of a half? Let's see. And it was not the global efficiency, a separate one. Oh, I have a bug. I have a bug. It's it's the efficiency being multiplied in twice. Okay. That is why construction takes so long. Yeah, cuz I'm always yes. Yes, that's exactly what's going on. Okay, good, we sorted that out. What was the other bug that we're talking about? Oh, um, the other bug was something about, uh, I don't know, uh, wrong build time in SPH. And then maybe some other bug. All right, so temporarily, I am going to do that, which effectively makes things correct. Not quite, but like close enough. That goes to 0 0.09. Still not quite right. Because 0 0.09 should... Why is that taking... All right, let's look at the other thing, which is the construction upgrade formula is just the cost plus 10k times 36. Yeah, not sure how I'm getting 77 in game and weird. I mean, let's look at this again. I said two tons and one one twelve. Yeah, that says 6175. So that's some kind of lie. Build cost 6175.
Yeah, and total cost is the correct total cost. And then it's immediately used. Estimated construction time is calculate build time of total cost. BP is calculate Oh. Right. Um. Yeah, cuz that extra that extra efficiency product goes in there again. Really took to efficiency. Yeah, but this is not quite right because no, the efficient no, that should be the correct use of oh right no, this is that is correct that is correct uh, I'm being confused because my spreadsheet doesn't have the efficiency multiplier, so everything is doubled what these numbers are, which means I think actually probably I want double the construction rate. practically speaking, given that I balanced for those even at the start. So yeah, that looks correct. Uh, balanced for, for double the speed at the end? Um, yeah, let's see. So if I do 2,000 construction workers. Hmm. Yeah, all right, I guess it's... Yeah, I think I want some different factor there. Maybe a square root instead of a three quarter root? Or the the sorry, the sixty-five. No, I guess sixty-five is already pretty low. So we'll try that just with the the seventy seven day thing and see what happens. Yeah. Um I mean you should bake in some efficiency numbers into your spreadsheet in the future, but like, Yes. <laughs> yes, because I was being dumb. Um all right, so let's go ahead and fly the plane. And we're going to accept, break the sound barrier. Man, it's apparently it's not a lot of clouds. Um, here we go. Also, apparently, oh no, I know I did this.
yeah, apparently they're they're all Germans. But that's fine. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, that gets really close to a tail strike. Yep. Yes, it does. I'll try to aggravate you. Just yeah, no, it, uh, I knew basically once I moved the gear up that it was going to do that. Um, my guess is because it leads to better area rolling around the start of the cockpit and also because before I adjusted the vertical position of these things they, um, the main wing was blanking the tail at reasonable alpha but that's not actually a thing yet. The hmm? this person would have that's a fake thing you're, you're only doing because you know what real air does I thought Far did that. 100% sure it does not. Huh, okay. 99.5% I mean, sure it does not, let's say. Okay. Yeah, apparently it's just a very, very sunny, no clouds day at the Cape. Yes, they sweep analysis is something very different art of stuttering. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a different thing. So what's what I'm talking about is like, and you can visually see this. So imagine if the tail planes were here and the main wing was still here. You would see, given the angle of attack, well, not actually because we're climbing, but assume that we were in level flight with, a, with an angle of attack like this, um, the main wings would be blocking the airflow onto the tail. And that's real bad. Uh, that's, so that's one thing that's very dangerous about T-tailed aircraft, is that um, you can, at high angles of attack, get into a situation where you no longer have pitch authority. Which is why, if you look at a bunch of 1950s fighters, they mostly follow the rule of main wing is mid-mount, and the tails are mounted on the bottom of the fuselage to avoid that problem. Now, if you go into negative alpha, then you have that problem with that layout, but you really shouldn't be doing that.
Oh, okay. Then, uh, so far as AOA sw sweep is just um, computing those coefficients at those given angles of attack, right? I, unless I'm still misunderstanding what you're asking. Yeah, AOA sweep is just going to sweep across the range of AOAs and calculate, you know, like show you what the values at those angles of attack are, but it doesn't, what FAR doesn't do is it doesn't, like, at least as far as I know, it does not do anything to um, coordinate consecutive uh, lifting surfaces that are not, you know, like, attached to each other. Yeah. Like, it'll, it'll do that for drag on things that are directly attached to each other, so there'll be less drag on that, uh, you won't have you won't have drag on the front of your flaps, but as soon as the voxelization no longer is touching a mesh can that consecutive surface, it's kind of like it doesn't exist. So there's no like turbulence coming from like hit the front of his cockpit back to his tail or something like that either. Um, yeah, I thought there was special handling for wings because wings are handled analytically rather than through voxels, yeah, yeah. but yeah. could could be wrong something that just got turned off because it was too annoying for people. I don't know. Yeah. Fourteen kilometers. Okay, I can probably start the dive now, but I want to get up to 15.8 kilometers. Yeah, what I really want is a constant dynamic pressure climb. All right, we're definitely approaching that point. Okay, here we are. Yeah, when I was simming, I started the dive at 230 meters per second, so this is this is even better. So, let's go. Supersonic. Here we go. Now it's time to start the climb out. Man, we didn't didn't even break nine kilometers. This thing is slick. 
Compliments to Zephyr for designing a slick craft. Let's get our dynamic pressure down to safe and reasonable levels. Oh, have I been an idiot? And yes. I have been an idiot and not actually done any telemetry analysis or telemetry analysis should be zero anyway. Yeah, but um, and you're not going to get supersonic anyway. All oh, right, because supersonic is is velocity limited, not Mach limited. Uh, no, because it's um, vertical speed limited. Oh, interesting. So you right. have to be able to, yeah, fly level. Yes. Relatively level. We. Okay, and I think we want to come a bit north of west, given that we took a great circle south before we then realign on the field. Yep, zero credits. How far offshore are we? Pretty far offshore. And we also want to definitely come north some. Thank you, Principia Flight Tracker, for telling me when I should look, get back to due west. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Did not actually expect to get that out of it, but that's cool. Anyway, 
good luck with the rest of your stream. I need to Thanks. sleep. Right. Good night. Sounds good. Night. I mean that's just the that's just the trajectory history functionality. It's just it happens that we're in ECEF, so um, we get the history or centered or fixed. All right, getting close to home. Like 40 miles. All right, so pretty sure the Space Center is there, right on top of the Visitor Center. Okay, so we're going to switch over to regular controls and go manual. Get under the cloud deck. We're still at Mach point six. So we want to bleed a little speed. Okay, full flaps. Okay, at about 200 knots.
Okay, that's a little bit... It's a little too much angle of attack for my liking. Not the best landing ever, but reasonable. Uh, that is Mouse Aim Flight. That is a mod that Tetrids and Ferrum made that basically replicates War Thunder's control scheme. Uh, it's only available on Curse. It's not on Secan or the forms, whatever, or GitHub. Uh, all right, so that. was highly successful. Come on. Okay, and this gave us an awful lot. 5, 10, 15 kilometers. Speed record. Break the sound barrier. Okay. And we got a bunch of science, too. Okay, I really don't have the best ideas on what to do next, but um, uh. So we can get some engines. We can convert over to a J forty seven to let us do the X plane supersonic contracts. Or we could get lighter tanks. OK, 
Okay, that'll work for now. Okay, so yeah. Have to not bite off more than we can chew. Uh, and I did... So, research formula should be correct. Yes, that is the correct research formula. All right. Um, oh yeah, I have to put somebody back in the hangar. At least for now. Forgot about that. There have to be some hangar text to actually refurbish that plane. Yeah, that's going up real slow. Um, I mean, I guess what I should just do is take the construction workers off task for a little bit. So they can finish recovering that, because it's only going to take five hours. and then put them back on construction. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to... I don't think we can make that with what we've got. Okay. Uh, I haven't gone through the Carmen line yet, so I don't have that available yet. Okay, let's see if we can make it through the Kerman line.
Here we go again. Okay, that was basically the same performance as last time. Oh, that time the thermometer is shrouded. That sucks. But we will make it through the Carmen line. Broadly similar performance to last time. This is Kerbalism, so all science is automated. There's no science to remember. And here we go. Womp. Okay, that gave us even more money, and we got our first pool of free applicants. Definitely going to make them researchers. So 
85 units of sounding payload. Let's see what happens if we try to do that. Oh, that's a nose cone, not a tank. That sucks. All right, we're at Now, uh, 85 units is an awful lot. Shoot. Yeah, that's that's not going to work great. Yeah, that takes 300 meters per second off. There's no way we're reaching 80 kilometers with that. Absolutely not going to happen. Yeah, that's even worse. All right, so apparently we can't do these with with wax. Which means basically our ability to do anything with wax is kind of gone. So this was a bad idea.
um, not just instead of spinning static points, but also you can fire people once you've hired them and you can move them around like assign or unassign. Um, and they have salaries that you have to pay, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so Alex Hudson. Okay. So this is frankly ludicrously expensive. But is the way of the future. I mean, we started in 1951, so stuff from Germany in World War II is not super relevant. We're using the JU-88 cockpit because we don't have a better option. Okay, and how much is it going to cost a tool? Let's see. 17k, good gracious. Oh, because of the fairings? Yeah, because of the fairings.
yeah, this is going to be a very expensive game to get into. But it's the wave of the future. So... All right, we could triple our build, right? With the, and we're going to do that immediately because there's not much point in upgrading any other buildings. Uh, and yes, that made the build time worse because we were already capped out at the number of engineers who could work on it, and all we did was just lower everyone's efficiency. If we had the next rocketry node unlocked, we could do this with an arrow B, but we don't. So, guess I'll get some science out of it, out of it, and accept this contract. Okay, um, Why is... oh, because it's untooled. Right. 240 days. That's impressive. Yeah, this stuff built slow. But yeah, sure, we have a bunch of money. We'll just go ahead and do this. Uh, let me just make sure this has the right instruments. Yes, it does. Good. All right. Pay the money. Do the thing. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to queue up a second one. Let's take that and then hire some more engineers. Oh. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. Okay, and I think I want to pretty much max this pad out. Uh, photography and a biosample, yeah. So our burn rate is go is going up pretty fast. All right. Now the question is Do I want to increase my burn rate even further? And I think the answer is no, because there aren't a lot of high paying contracts. Like this pays okay, but we'll need to build another plane for it. This pays okay, but we'll need to definitely need to build a plane for it. And these have an awful lot of sounding payload. This actually pays pretty good because we're well past the cap, the, the cooldown. So yeah, we could just put that on board the thing that we have in a small tank and then fling it up to Many kilometers. Yeah, Squirrel, I'm sure it would pay off for doing it on a smaller rocket, but since I'm building these anyway, I don't really want to mess around with that anymore. Um, all right, so let's warp. Uh, that's a good point, Alex Hudson. Of like how long, how much it would cost that for that length of time. It's possible. Okay, it's August. 
early morning launch. And our efficiency is going to be way higher now. Yep, we're up to 60% on both. Researchers are still at 54%. It's going to take a while for the researchers to get good. Squirrel, that is exactly correct. Most things will build uh, faster than it says they will. Here we go. Okay, we're just going to get a few degrees off, and then follow surface velocity. And we will spin up shortly prior to burnout. Not quite 300. Okay, everything's running. And we got a bunch more records. Oh, what's the thing down here? Oh, you can delete all messages. That's cool. 1500, 2000, 120, 140. And up we go.
and we're starting to re-enter. Meanwhile, more altitude records. Well, that was successful. I guess 60 RPM is enough to gyroscopically stabilize. Bunch science, bunch of science here too. Some funds back, and yep, we got more free personnel. Well, you still have to pay their salaries. All right, that's pretty good. I think I'm going to call it quits there. Thanks everybody for watching. Catch you next time. Night.